Hi, I'm Zainab Hussein. Um, guys, I hate to break it to you, but you're all gonna die. All of you. Um, hopefully not imminently, and certainly not during the course of this talk. But um, the idea for this sort of came from um, an observed disconnect between the ways in which people are afraid of dying and the ways in which people are probabilistically dying. For example, people sim uh, are still really concerned about dying in a terrorist attack. In fact, um, Suffolk University did a poll, 51% of Americans believe that there will be a terrorist attack on US soil in the next year. So as I'm rehearsing this talk and trying to convince all of you that you don't need to be worried about people dying in a terrorist attack, I decided to go on Facebook in which I discovered that a cousin of mine in Pakistan died in a terrorist attack late last week. Kind of heavy. Uh, so I wasn't sure if I was actually going to give this talk at all. And I ended up calling my mother and uh, she asked me, did my results still hold? And the fact of the matter is that I based it on the probability of dying in a US attack and my results did hold. So she sent me an inspirational text message, which is uh, about to appear in meme form. And I decided to sort of go forward with this. So um, one of the issues is that a terrorist attack, at least for living in a place like the United States, it's an exceptionally rare event. And um, that's my mom, by the way. Uh, she told me to think of Malala, who's the young woman who uh, was attacked by the Taliban in the north of Pakistan. Um, God, I'm nervous, can you tell? <laughs> so what this really drives home is like a very important point from statistics and from data science is that my personal anecdotal experience with terrorism doesn't impact the marginal probability that you all will die. And um, if you look at this, this is the CDC data on people that have died um, as a result of terrorist attacks from 2000 to 2010. So basically no one since September 11th has died as a result of terrorism. So maybe we should all sort of like calm down just a little bit. Um, so how are people actually dying? Um, when I moved to New York, I was actually really convinced that I was going to get murdered by strangers. Um, and that's probabilistically not going to happen. Um, as it turns out, this is actually kind of also a little bit heavy and depressing, but um, <laughs> here we are. 92% um, <laughs> of murder victims and also suspects are black and Latino, and they don't release socioeconomic data, but I would imagine that there's a pretty heavy tie. So for a five-year running average for New York, it's about 507. Um, so the probability of being part of the 17%, that's like 86 women, and then for the race and ethnicity, that's like seven or eight women out of two million, my chances are pretty good of surviving, basically. Um, so if you get stabbed, like let's say you do get attacked, if you get stabbed, the probability that you'll survive a stabbing is 96%. Gunshot wounds is 78%, which I thought was kind of crazy. Um, I'm a little bit behind on my slides. So if you're actually in a plane crash, the probability that you'll survive that is 90%. And looking at 30 years of data from that, um, there's I think 81% chance that you will emerge completely unscathed. So there's sort of this toss up, like what's safer, cars or planes? And um, <laughs> if you go mile per mile, um, planes are actually still more dangerous. There's 1.9 expected deaths for 100,000 miles of travel. And for cars, it's actually 1.3. But um, more people died in 2011 as a result of poisoning than they did in car crashes. So just basically the things that we think are killing us are not actually killing us. So um, the takeaway from all of this is sort of that as people who live in a society, the vast majority of ways that people are dying are sort of unpredictable. And if you look at, uh, for young people, the way that most people die from ages one to 44 is due to unintentional injuries. So um, there's not really much that you can do to prevent that besides being a sort of conscientious citizen. And um, the reason that I wanted to do this talk is to sort of 
alleviate people's fear surrounding dying in the sense that if you live in this sort of fear-based mentality, then you suffer needlessly. Um, you suffer a lot before anything bad has actually happened. So, I mean, whether you're stabbed or you're shot, like, you have a pretty good chance of making it, <laughs> you know? Like, thanks. <laughs>